Good morning. Today is Tuesday morning. It's a drizzly, rainy day outside, but I've got in here, I responded to emails and offers, and I've gone ahead and pulled the first two orders. One was six comic books, and one's 34 comic books. But now it's time for us to get to doing packages, so let's get to it. All right, our first item is a postcard in A5. It is a bridge scene. Oh, let's see. These first five slots are my very first attempt at postcards so uh, and there was a some of these that got jumbled up and mixed up and they're and they're in the wrong slot so yeah sometimes it takes a while on these first few i think it's just the a one through five oh there we go there we go yep that one's it that was good all right put these back in a5 and we'll get a postcard mailer. All right. Here you go. This is the bridge. Uh, beautiful Truckee and the Virginia Street Bridge in Reno, Nevada. It has not been postmarked. We'll put this in a postcard mailer. Now, this postcard sold for $3.50 plus shipping. And it's been listed since October the 2nd of 2017. And since it was such a small price, I'm just going to write my address and their address and put a stamp on it. And that'll be the end of that uh, package. And so now we have two uh, po uh, comic book orders. And like I said, I already pulled both of these, so we don't have to wait around for me to pull them all. The first one is six Fantastic Four comics. Fantastic Four 175, 392, 393, 394, Annual 17, and the annual 18. And these will ship an illegal flat rate envelope, which I've already wrote the do not bend and put the stamp on it. And so we'll put these in a Tyvek envelope. And now we need a Gemini mailer. Oh, got my bubble wrap in. I still got to make up two more comic lots today. So I want to get those done before I do any listings today. We'll tape this down. All right, for these six Fantastic Four comic books, uh, the buyer's total was nine nine dollars and 45 cents plus shipping and from what i could tell the oldest one had been listed since july the 31st of 2017. all right let's tape this down And I put a piece of tape on the top and the bottom just to make sure it doesn't split. All right, that's all there is to it. We don't have to weigh that one. Now, the next person bought uh, 34 comic books. And they're all X titles. X-Men, X-Force, that kind of thing. And so hopefully you'll see them as I pair them up.
and we'll, that's 16 in that stack we're going to put that in a tie back envelope and I, maybe you've noticed but there were a couple of these books that they got two of so hopefully they noticed it too So we got these 16 in the tie back. When we fold it over, we'll make that nice tight brick out of it. There we go. And so that should leave us 18 for the next one. Yep, 18. Alright, let's get the other tie back. And this person, yeah, I charge 75 cents for each item after the first. Now, if you order this many, you know, I do, you know, cut a little bit of a deal. Um, but they were asking how much shipping for, I think they started with 41 comic books. And that is too big for any flat rate box and so i told them you know that's 17.99 and they're like oh i thought you could do it for like five bucks media mail and i told them no you know comic books are not supposed to go media mail but i'm sure you'll find another seller they'll do it for you and then they're like oh, okay well how about you know 30 because i told them uh shipping for 35 to 50 comics is 17.99 so they're like okay how much is shipping for 34 and so 34 would be 14.99, and so they're like, oh, okay, I'll take 34 of them. So that's what they did. And this is the most I can put in a medium flat rate box. And you'll see in a minute. It, I didn't see any of these that look really big and thick, so hopefully it won't be too bad. But you know, they can really bow out the the box. So we'll see how this does. We are using, like I said, medium flat rate priority mailbox. Let's see how these fit in here. Yeah, so you get a pretty good bow to the box, which I don't mind. I mean, because that. But it does make it difficult. The box lid doesn't want to fold right when you really bow it out. Alright, and there again, we don't need to weigh it. Nowhere near the weight limit. But, you know, it is bowed out to where it just spins... But it can't move around or anything. So, two items we don't have to weigh. And now we have a PlayStation 2 game. And a computer part. It is, uh... Well, let me go around the other way. It's an old computer part that's been on for a while. And I'm, on the boxes here I need to look for a Dell Precision. 486 slash 25s. Let's see. And it should be a really old tag like that, I would think. Nothing behind the model lady here. Right there it is. Or at least it's the box. Oh, I can't step up that high. Or I can't reach that high. Alright, and that's the only thing left in here. Alright. 
Now the PlayStation 2 game is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, it does not have the instructions. The disc was cleaned and tested. It did load properly. And this was a very good sale. Uh, we're going to ship it priority in a uh, 1097 box. Get the box taped up. I need a sheet of bubble wrap. Let's wrap the game up. And I'm going to go ahead and take the end so the game doesn't slide out or anything. And we're going to put that in a tie back envelope. Prevent any moisture from getting in. Now we need a half a piece of bubble wrap. Might even be able to just wrap the whole thing again. I don't mind. This game sold for $173.75 with free shipping. And so I don't mind using an extra 25 cent piece of bubble wrap to protect it real well. Now the game was listed uh, just four days ago on May the 7th of 2021. And usually I ship the games first class, but obviously for this value, if they lose it, I want to re be reimbursed some. It'll ship at the 12 ounce rate, and it will need to be signed for. And now for the power supply, we'll use a regional rate A box. We need a sheet of bubble wrap. And this is a power supply from a tower computer. Like I said, it was from a Dell Precision 486-25S, which I'm not even sure what that is. And like I said, if you're going to part this stuff out, your return rate is pretty high. It's like 4%. But uh, what you need to do, like when I got this tower, is I just hook it up to a monitor and I turn it on. Make sure it, you know, comes on. And that is basically it. Um, I don't know a tremendous amount about computers, but if it comes on and I can move the mouse around and open up a, you know, most time there's a program or two loaded on there already. Let's see. This is not cooperating. Maybe it'd be like that. No, that's still quite loose. Oh, okay, what we'll do is... Let me get a sheet of the small, tiny bubble wrap. But, uh, yeah, you, you just turn it on. And like I said, open up a program or two. Make sure the mouse is working and that it stays on. Because uh, sometimes I've had them before where you turn them on. And in like five minutes, they just shut themselves off. You know, so you got to... Let me get another piece of small bubble wrap. So, I mean, I, I'll lots of times leave the computer on while I go and, you know, either do some more packages or while I list some items and then come back to it. Make sure it's still on and functioning properly. But even when you do that, you know, parts sit in these boxes and I guess over time, you know, they're deteriorate and, and don't work this power supply sold for $29.99 plus shipping 
I don't have to weigh it, nowhere near the weight limit. But it's been listed since May the 9th of 2016, so just over five years. So it is possible in that course of time that something has now gone wrong and maybe that doesn't work. Now, like I said, I haven't, most of the issues I have are with uh, the motherboards and the other accessory boards. Not so much the power supplies. So let me get these labeled and I'll see you for the next ones. Okay, we have another postcard now in D14. And it is a dinosaur skeleton in a museum. There we go. Yep. All right. Put these back in D14. There we go. We will need a postcard mailer. Well, here you go. 70 foot dinosaur skeleton at the U.S. National Museum, Smithsonian Institution. Free postcard for servicemen. I stood at the foot of this creature, but it has not been mailed. This sold for $12.89 plus shipping and has been listed since April the 6th of 2019. And so now we need to get pantyhose. I think this is the first time I've sold any pantyhose since I've been recording. But, you know, with everybody staying at home last year, pantyhose sales have really, really slowed down. And I don't see the ones I need right here. Where else do I have pantyhose? Well, okay, let me do the uh, postcard up, and then I'll find the pantyhose. Because I am not too sure where they're at. And there's no sense in you watching me mill around for 10 or 15 minutes. Alright, we're going to ship the postcard in a 1086, or an 864 box. Get our half a piece of bubble wrap. And then we just tuck, fold, and tape. And that's all there is to it. This will ship at the four ounce rate. So I will find the pantyhose and be back. That was a lot easier than I thought. I remember that I had a bag that had some pantyhose in them. But these are both the same. Uh, fuller figure, silky sheer pantyhose made by Fruit of the Loom. Uh, the size is Queen 3X and the color is black. And these are going to ship at a 1266 box just because they're the way they were packaged and like I said you know over the course of the last year the pantyhose sales have basically just died no one's going out but we start having people go out again I suspect the pantyhose sales will increase again let me get a sheet of bubble wrap. And I think I can hang this on the wall now. But yeah, they I had these listed individually. The buyer bought both of them. On the pantyhose, the bigger the size, the better. Like these were Queen 3Xs. 
that's a pretty daggone good size. Let me get another sheet of bubble wrap. I tend to stay away from like the petites or the smalls, even uh, the medium stuff. I, I don't really mess with it. I try to stick with queens or bigger. Uh, now, sometimes I will buy the somewhat smaller size, like a large or an extra large, if it's a color, you know, like a navy blue or bright red or something like that. Some of those colors will do well. But otherwise, I stick with queens or larger. All right, and for the two packages of pantyhose there, it was $19.98 plus shipping. And it, they've been listed quite some time, since July 5th of 2016, so just under five years. And it'll ship at the 12-ounce rate. And that's it. We are up to the minute. So I'm going to go do the label, and then I'm going to come back here and continue building 300-count lots. Okay, it is after lunch. FedEx has been dropped off. And now we have a... Cigar Aficionado magazine that we need to find. Put these it's going to be 1995. Those are nice sevens. These are pretty nice sixes. Here's the knife box. There she is. That's the one we're looking for. Alright, so then we need nine sixes back. And nine seven. Okay. Oh, knocked over my big Funko Pop. Okay, so now we have a scar knife aficionado. We also have an action figure. This one right here, the UFC fighter. Alright, and I think we'll start by doing the UFC fighter. There you go. It is, his name's Rich Franklin. Uh, he's probably about seven inches tall. He will go in an 864 box. And he came in with the collection of wrestlers that I bought last year. So I brought a big tub of loose wrestlers. Okay, we use a sheet of bubble wrap. I finished, as you can tell, it's cleared up. I finished building the 300 count comic book lots. I built six of them, so should be good to go for a little bit. It's always fun building them, though, because you see the new boxes. And this is stuff I bought years ago and have not been through. So sometimes you're like, oh, man, look at this book, you know. But i got to clear the space. I need to make space. Can't list and sell them all. Okay, Rich... Rich Franklin here, sold on a best offer I sent out, 12% off. He sold for $10.34 plus shipping and has been listed since September the 26th of last year, 2020. And he'll ship at the 8-ounce rate. And now we have the Cigar Aficionado, Autumn of 1995. And I mean, that's a pretty thick magazine. These are expensive to ship. Uh, I charge $9.99 because I ship them out priority mail. Let's put it in a Tyvek envelope. And I use uh, bike cardboard because it's nice and thick and stout to hold it and keep it up straight once in the, in the box. So let me cut this. I like to fold that extra flap over and I take that flap 
on this side to the uh, cardboard. And then I can take the envelope on this side. And it holds quite well. And I go ahead and do the top and bottom as well. Oh, come on. And then I also will need a sheet of bubble wrap because I do take a piece of bubble wrap around the center. Like so. And I ship these in the Priority Mail Regional Rate A box. I guess it's the A2. Since you have, you know, there's two different sizes on the regional A's. A2 box. Man, this tape is wanting to fold over a lot. And then it's a real nice fit, just fits right in there. Eh, I don't like that. I'm gonna use a few packing peanuts because there's really not very much room in there. I guess I could wrap it up in one more sheet of bubble wrap, but we'll just fill it this way. There we go. All right. Step back so you're not just looking at one area of the box. And uh, we do not have to weigh this because we're nowhere near the weight limit. This Cigar Fishing Auto magazine sold for $14.99 plus shipping. And it has been listed since May the 4th of 2018. Okay, our next item is a set of comic books. Something is Killing the Children, issue number 11. Cover A and cover B. And we will put these into another bag. There we go. And these are both first prints. And we will ship these out in a Gemini mailer. Okay, let's tape it on down. And you did not see me pull those because th I know they're not out in the slot out there where they should be. They are in uh, these two comic boxes standing up. And so I had to dig through there to find them. But they were pretty easy to find. And this set sold for $8.75 plus shipping. And it has been listed since October the 21st of last year, 2020, and it'll ship at the 12 ounce rate. Okay, we are all caught up on packages, and so now I'm gonna test and photograph some games and do another 300 count lot of comic books. But I thought I would show you how I, you know, test and photograph the video games. This, these are gonna be PlayStation 2 games. Uh, let me turn my... helps if you turn it on. And these are discs that I cleaned with the JFJ machine. I always lay the case here for what the one I'm cleaning. And I hit reset each time. I don't know if you have to or not. Okay, and that's usually a good sign. Turn this this way a little bit more. Good. I do have a... This is just a generic controller that I have hooked up to it. Uh, just so it, you can speed some of the screens along to get to the, you know, the start screen.
Checking for memory card. Continue without. That's the other reason you need a controller. So I wait for the screen. I, I've got my camera ready to go, but I wait for the uh, press start menu button. Well, I'm still waiting. It's not letting me get through this, so I'm going to go ahead and pause you, and, or I'll cut from right now until whenever the start screen does appear. Alright, apparently this one does not have a start button, or I must have done it when it had that opening scene. It played all through this intro thing, and now it's ready to start. So I just took a picture of this, and then I just eject. I'll lay these out here. If I had instructions, I'd put it next to it. But I take one picture of the whole thing here. And then I zoom in. I take a picture of this half, this half, and then the disc, both sides. Even though the bottom side, usually with the pictures, you can't really see any scratches or anything on it. Because it's just a reflection back. And uh, all these cords and stuff, you know, you see it in that picture where I have the game going. But that's always my last picture on the listing. My other pictures are nice and clean and white. They do not have all that junk in the back. And that's it. That is all there is to it. And when I, in my listing, I say that the game was tested and did load properly. Uh, as far as playing, I don't know. Uh you would have to play each game all the way through to really say it works completely properly. And I don't know if anyone has that kind of time. And then when I put a new disc in, I hit close and I have to reset. And it just starts the whole thing over again. And I always put the case on top or next to the system I'm, so you can see the case and the screen at the same time and know it's the correct game and everything. And so that's it. That's all I do. I got uh, two more PlayStation 2 games. I've got two Wii games. And then I got a Wii console returned to me. And I need to open it up and make sure that it does still work and then swap anything out. But then I'll have to issue their refund. And I have uh, three or four Wii U games to test as well. So I'm going to test games and then photograph and list another 300 comic lot. And I will come back when we have another sale. All right, we just got paid on a Tarzan comic book. Published by DC. There. Uh oh, we got two. All right, let me go in there and figure out which one this is. Okay, got it figured out. He got the better conditioned book. Let's put this one back. All right, there it goes. All right, so we have Tarzan. I guess they, this one's called The Return of Tarzan. Issue number 219, published by DC. That will ship in a Gemini mailer. Tape it into place. There we go. Get all my items there in the right order.
been kind of a quiet day on eBay today, but you know, yesterday was so busy. It's okay. And this Tarzan comic book sold for four dollars and fifteen cents plus shipping. And it has been listed since January the 16th of 2019. And it'll ship at the 8 ounce rate. Alright, that is it for today. I'm going to head on home. I hope you all have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.